So I know most of you know him, but um, Keo received his PhD in biomedical engineering in 2009 from Hanyang University, Korea, and began his postdoctoral training as a research fellow um, in our center in 2010. So actually, I think Keho was one of the first people that we hired. Rudolf I think, was the first one, and Keo was not long after that. So there's very few people that are still around from that time. So it's really exciting to have had Keo with us um, throughout that time period. And, I was just um, talking with him too at when he came, his, his oldest is one year old. So that's 10 years is a long time. And, um, and it's been really fun to see all the different uh, things you've done over that time. Uh, Keo was promoted to instructor in 2012 and has been assistant professor um, at, since 2016. He has experience in quantitative neuroimaging analysis using structural and diffusion MRI data. His research goals provide unique and biologically relevant imaging biomarkers that not only help us to better understand normal and abnormal development, but also aid in the detection of diagnosis and diagnosis of disease. And I have to say that due to the biological kind of relevance of the measures he's been working at, he's attracted the attention and collaboration of some really top people in the field like Chris Walsh and um, a publication they put into Science, Jane Newberger and the cardiology group. I think that um, the, the, the ability to, um, to say something that they can understand in terms of its genetic relevance has been something that has really excited um, a lot of collaboration, again, from people that are known to be among the best in their field. So really interesting approaches and methods. So Kia's going to talk to us about advanced fetal MRI processing and analysis methods and applications. Okay, so, yeah, thanks for a nice introduction, and I will uh, start sharing my screen. So can everybody see the slide? Yep, I can see perfectly. Okay, so uh, today I will uh, present advanced fetal brain MRI processing and analytic method and I will introduce uh, our application study using this method. First, I will introduce our automated in vivo fetal brain MRI processing pipeline, and I will talk about the quantitative fetal brain analysis, including cortical regional analysis and cortical global pattern analysis, and uh, our recent biological fetal brain age analysis. And we have applied our method to the studies of typically developing fetuses and fetuses with various brain malformations and disorder. A fetal, human fetal brain shows a very dynamic development process and major neurogenic event, including neurogenesis and neuronal proliferation and <clears throat> migration and cortical circuit and external fiber development. And we can see very rapid brain cortical gyrification and large changes in brain size and many uh, structures. And if some brain has a, a serious problem with this development process for uh, many cases, we can identify abnormal size or shape of specific brain tissues and specific structures using MRI. And uh, one previous study reported that among fetuses with abnormal ultrasonography, fetal MRI could provide additional diagnostic information in 50% and it could also change prognostic information in 20% and clinical management in more than one third of cases. So fetal MRI is very powerful and important imaging modality for fetal diagnosis. But uh, MRI of the fetus in utero is a difficult imaging because of uh, unpredictable and extreme uh, fetal movement. So currently single shot fat spinnacle T2 weighted imaging is the most common technique for fetal structural MRI because it is less susceptible to fetal motion and it shows relatively good tissue contrast. But uh, there are still uh, motion artifacts shown between slices. So uh, to get better diagnostic image, it is often necessary to acquire multiple images in different axial, uh, coronal, and sagittal views. And from this uh, fetal MRI, it is needed to check important fetal brain metrics uh, like this. But the 
brain structural changes are often too small to be detected by visual MRI assessment. So this is the example of two fetal brains at 25 weeks of gestational age. Uh, from this fetal MRI, they were judged to have normal structure and normal folding. But when we check the uh, follow-up neonatal imaging, uh, one, one brain still looked good, but the other brain was diagnosed as perisylvian polymicrogyria. So to quantify and detect brain abnormalities better, we need the computational processing and analysis for fetal brain MRI. And this is our uh, whole pipeline to process fetal brain MRI from the raw uh, MRI data we expect only brain region and exclude uh, other unnecessary parts. And we perform MRI quality check and uh, do motion correction and volume reconstruction with the super resolution. And we transform the image to a standard template space and segment cortical plate region. Uh, we are mainly interested in surface-based analysis. So we routinely extract cortical surface model from the uh, segmentation data. But a few years ago, uh, we did um, manual processing for the several steps and it took a, a lot of time and effort. Uh, so for more various and active fetal brain studies, it was really uh, needed to develop automatic processing method. And recently, as all we know, Deep learning techniques are widely used for medical image processing and analysis. And we, we found that deep learning techniques could be also very useful for our approach. So uh, we have changed our several steps from manual to automatic using deep learning method. So I will explain each step in more detail. Uh, first, we segment uh, brain only brain region from raw MRI data and one of our uh, students uh, implemented and developed an automatic brain segmentation tool using a 2D UNET convolutional neural network architecture. And it was trained with uh, a lot of uh, 2D slice images from 397 MRIs of 81 uh, typically developing fetuses. And it was very successful and this is one example of uh, automatic brain masking and extraction. And in our tenfold course validation, the accuracy measured with dice coefficient was higher uh, than 95%. And the uh, fetal MRI shows uh, inter-slice motion artifacts. So two control for that motion effect uh, retrospectively. Most of the motion correction and volume reconstruction tools, they are using slice to volume matching and registration techniques. So it needs multiple images for input and uh, output data is one motion corrected uh, reconstructed volume with higher resolution. And this motion correction uh, works well and shows good performance for fetal MRI with uh, various ages and various amounts of motion. However, the performance of motion correction and volume reconstruction highly depend on the quality of input imaging data. So among multi-view volume images, if bad quality image is used and input into that inter-slice motion correction, output data quality is also degraded. So you can clearly see uh, <clears throat> the difference of output data quality between when using all good images and when including one bad image. So it is very important to exclude bad quality image among multiple images for good motion correction. So we had to visually check image quality and select the input data set, but this, uh, that manual process was time consuming and also it suffered from intra and interator variabilities. So to make our pipeline more automatic and 
fully automatic. We recently developed a tool for automatic fetal MRI quality check using deep learning model. So for this deep learning model training, we visually assess and score the quality of 5,051 volumes from uh, 380, 357 subjects. And a good image had the score of one. And that image is good in every plane and it shows good signal to noise ratio and it shows good tissue contrast and mild motion. And the fair quality image, for that image, uh, we gave a score 0 0.5. And that image is good for in plane, but it shows noise and motion in other planes. And a uh, bad image with zero score showed a uh, very severe noise motion. And sometimes uh, some fetal brain includes only the part of the brain, not the whole brain. So. <clears throat> Uh, based on this criteria, two trained raters scored the images and the final scores were the average of the two raters score. So this is the uh, example of the good image data. So everything is clear and the good signal, good contrast and uh, motion is very, very mild. And uh, this is the example of fair quality image and uh, good quality in plane, but uh, we can see interslice motion. And this is the example of bad image. The signal contrast is very bad and very noisy. And uh, in this case, only uh, the part of the brain is uh, shown in this fetal MRI. So we performed uh, automatic quality scoring and, and the classification using 3D ResNet architecture and the result is that the mean absolute <clears throat> error, the difference between visual and automatic scoring, uh, that value was 0 0.15 and correlation coefficient between a visual and automatic quality rating was uh, 0 0.77, which is very high. And these are the uh, result example of our automatic quality check and scoring for new data set. So I think this works pretty well and we are now testing more data to set the threshold for automatic bad data exclusion. And the next step is uh, special alignment to the common space for further group analysis. So we used uh, linear volume <clears throat> image registration between individual and template images. And we recently uh, developed the automatic left and right cortical plate region segmentation method using a 2D convolutional neural network. So we use the multi-view aggregation with the test time augmentation approach to use 3D information and also increase the segmentation accuracy. So we separately perform uh, cortical segmentation in each axial, sagittal, and corner views. In addition, in each view, original image is flipped several times along X, Y, Z axis, and those flipped images are also segmented. So uh, multiple segmentation result from uh, different views are combined for the final segmentation. And in our experiment, we confirmed that our multi-view aggregation and the test time augmentation approach significantly increased the segmentation accuracy compared to simple 2D or 3D neural network model. And this model was trained using 52 uh, fetal MRI data. And the re result is good. The accuracy of our automatic cortical segmentation is high. So dice coefficient was higher than 90% and mean surface distance error was less than 0 0.185 millimeter. And when you compare it <clears throat> with the other method of automatic fetal cortical segmentation, our approach shows higher dice coefficient and lower mean surface distance error. We also uh, 
measured and compared cortical plate volume and surface area and mean curvature from manual and automatic segmentation data. So uh, these cortical measures are very similar between two data sets. So we showed that quantitative cortical measures calculated from our automatic segmentation data are uh, reliable. And after cortical plate segmentation, uh, from that uh, segmentation volume, we extract inner cortical plate surface using the isosurface tessellation function. But uh, when we use the isosurface tessellation function, the number of vertices and the, the number of triangles are different across different subjects. So uh, to make a better standard mesh structure, cortical surface vertices are mapped on this sphere model and their or original X, Y, Z coordinates are interpolated based on this standard uh, sphere mesh structure. So after that, we can get the reconstructed surface model with the same number of triangles and vertices across different subjects. So this surface shows a better mesh property and good mesh properties always uh, advantageous for any mesh-based uh, surface shape measures. And also it, it is good for future uh, vertex-based analysis. So now we have a fully automatic pipeline that starts with the raw fetal MRI data and generate the uh, cortical surface model. And after this processing, we can calculate several traditional brain measures such as whole brain and cortical volumes and cortical surface area and several cortical folding measures. We can measure uh, gyrification index, so-called folding depth and cortical surface curvature and cortical surface curvedness. And there are also many other uh, measures that we can uh, calculate. And in previous fetal studies, uh, one study, they computed several cortical folding measures such as curvedness, normalized mean curvature and Gaussian curvature. And showed a very strong correlation with gestational age using nonlinear function. And this study found that the preterm newborns uh, shows significantly higher whole brain gyrification index and whole brain cortical surface area compared to uh, fetal brain. And this study shows significantly lower whole brain gyrification index and whole brain cortical surface area in fetuses with congenital heart disease. So uh, this global whole brain cortical growth and folding measures are used for many fetal uh, brain studies. But for more uh, advanced fetal brain analysis, uh, we need more uh, regional analysis because uh, uh, regional cortical surface growth and folding is uh, uh, related to the development of specific functional areas. And it is also biologically meaningful to examine the relationships between different cortical regions and perform global pattern analysis of cortical folding because uh, cortical regions show optimal size, organization, and arrangement in relation to other cortical regions under genetic control. So first, for regional analysis, uh, we first need to parcelate and define uh, distinct anatomical or functional uh, regions. And so-called gyral regional parcellation are widely used for uh, regional cortical analysis. And uh, there are several automatic tools to do that for child or adult brain MRI, but uh, fetal brain shows very uh, <clears throat> uh, dynamic temporal pattern of cortical folding and early fetal brain has a different uh, smooth shape compared to mature brain. So 
previous automatic cortical fasciculation tool used for child and adult MRI cannot be applied to fetal brain. So recently we developed a, a new method for automatic parcellation and labeling of cortical cell size for the fetal brain. So uh, in this study, we use the weighted total probability map from the multiple fetal brain template. And we, we transfer this probability maps using surface registration onto the individual fetal brain and assign the so-called labels to each cortical folding. And in this process to determine the contribution level of each template to the individual labeling, we measured the similarity of jarification between the individual and the template brains and defined the weight of so-called probability maps. So uh, the so-called probability information of the template that shows the most similar jarification with this individual data, that uh, template probability information is the used most. And this is the example of automatic uh, postulation and labeling of cortical cell size and the labeling accuracy measured with the dice coefficient was higher <clears throat> than 95%. So uh, based on this automatic circle labeling, uh, after population and labeling, we can perform uh, various sulcus-wise regional analysis. And one of our recent interests is to observe and analyze the timing of circle emergence. Uh, as the human brain shows a specific temporal pattern of primary so-called emergence. So uh, so-called emergence time is an uh, important marker of normal and abnormal brain development. Previously, uh, previous MRI study uh, made a so-called emergence time table by visual inspection on 2D slice image and uh, another study performed quantitative modeling of age related changes in cortical surface curvature and detected the uh, timing of signif significant curvature changes. So uh, this time was regarded as a so-called emergence time. But in these studies, uh, the sample size was small and there was no information about the uh, variation of the so-called emergence time. So in our study, using a larger data set, we used a uh, different statistical approach to inv investigate the time and, and variation of so-called emergence. So after uh, automatic so-called labeling, we, we binarized absence or presence of each sulcus and used uh, logistic regression to model the so-called emergence. And from this logistic regression model, we uh, estimate the time of so-called emergence and also uh, variation of so-called emergence. And uh, here, if the age range having both presence and absence, uh, if that age range is wide, it means the timing of so-called emergence is variable. So uh, this is the so-called emergence time table showing not only the timing, but also its variation. And this is the color map showing the timing and variation of so-called uh, emergence on the cortical surface model. And uh, especially from this map, we can see a temporal variation of so-called emergence, central so-called emergence temporal variation is very low, but the variation of inferior frontal so-called emergence is very high. So this uh, information of the timing and variation of so-called emergence in normal brains would be useful for assessing fast or a delayed so-called folding development in abnormal fetal brains. And for more, local cortical analysis at a vertex level, we need to define 
very tech spatial correspondence across different subjects. So to do that, we are using 2D surface registration method, which is a sphere to sphere warping. And this process defines the corresponding regions between two brains by matching their cortical folding maps. And this shows the uh, cortical spatial correspondence at the surface registration across different uh, fetal brains with different gestational age. So using this approach, uh, recently we have uh, published vertex-based regional focal depth analysis in fetuses with Down syndrome. So uh, we measured so-called depth on the cortical surface using uh, adaptive, adaptive distance transform algorithm. And we performed a vertex-wise comparison between Down syndrome and control group after uh, surface registration. And uh, we found uh, altered so-called folding depth in fetuses with Down syndrome in the left and right cilian fissure, so left superior temporal sulcus, the right central sulcus, and the right parietal sulcus. So uh, alterations in cortical folding development in, in these regions may be uh, associated with the impaired language and fine motor functions shown in a Down syndrome patients. And uh, for a long time, I have been also interested in global folding pattern because uh, it is an important and meaningful feature of brain development. So primary global circle pattern means the patterns of arrangement, number, size, and relationship of circle fold. That primary circle folding pattern is uh, prenatally determined before birth, and also that is strongly under genetic control. So one study uh, found the spatial, uh, significant spatial correlation between gene expression and so-called gyral maps. And recently we revealed that spatial pattern of primary sulci is temporally invariant. So we generated group density map of early initial so-called folding pit for uh, different age groups. And we found that the position and spatial variance of early so-called pit were very similar between the groups. So uh, we conclude that although fetal brain shows a very dynamic uh, brain growth and brain size changes, so-called primary so-called pattern can be a stable feature associated with the genetically influenced prenatal cortical development. And during fetal stage, uh, for abnormal fetal cases, we can perceive abnormal cortical folding pattern when compared to normal folding pattern development. So uh, I developed a quantitative method for a geometric and topological so-called pattern analysis. So uh, we characterize so-called pattern using a graph structure that includes geometric features of so-called folds and uh, their inter-so-called geometric and topological relationships. And we can compare different so-called graphs using optimal graph matching techniques and then calculate the uh, normalized so-called pattern similarity index that ranges from zero to one. And we use this method for fetal brain so-called pattern analysis. And our approach was to compare individual fetal brain to the uh, normal template brain. So we can measure so-called pattern similarity to the normal template. Uh, template brains have typical cortical folding structure, which is uh, very common for many normal brains. So fetal brain with atypical folding pattern will have a low pattern similarity to the template. And we have applied this 
methods and studied uh, fetuses with the brain malformations, a genesis of corpus callosum, congenital heart disease, and, and ventricular megaly. And from this application studies, our main conclusion is that fetal circle pattern analysis can show sensitive detection of abnormal cortical development, and it can do early detection, and it shows the potential as an early imaging marker to predict future neurodevelopmental outcomes. So this is the uh, first uh, fetal circle pattern analysis study. So we found a significantly reduced folding pattern similarity to the normal template in fetuses with brain malformation. So uh, fetus with the polymicrogyria and one fetus with chari, chari 2 malformation. And in addition to this uh, group analysis, we performed, also performed individual uh, <clears throat> brain analysis. And among uh, those abnormal cases, one polymicrogyria brain, that brain was uh, initially uh, misjudged to have normal brain folding in qualitative fetal MRI assessment, but in our quantitative analysis, that brain was assessed to be abnormal. <clears throat> so this case shows very uh, low circle pattern similarity, and that value is obviously uh, out of normal circle pattern value uh, distribution. And when you compare uh, whole brain gyrification index and whole brain and cortical uh, volume between the two groups, there was no significant group difference at all. And more recently, we examined so-called pattern in fetuses with, uh, with isolated agenesis of corpus callosum, and the result pattern is very uh, similar. We detected significantly uh, disorganized so-called position pattern in fetuses with agenesis of corpus callosum, and the statistical group difference was uh, highly significant, but we found uh, no significant group difference in gyrification index and whole brain and cortical volume. So for some brain disorder, it may be more uh, important to see the global pattern than measuring the volume or simple amount of folding. And our another application study showed a powerful early detection of abnormal cortical uh, development. We showed a significantly lower circle pattern similarity in fetuses with congenital heart disease compared to healthy fetuses. And uh, congenital heart disease fetal circle pattern values appear to be uh, lower than normal subject subject values in early fetal stage before the third trimester. And when you see the previous result of the uh, gyrification, whole brain gyrification and global uh, surface area analysis, they, they showed delayed cortical development in congenital heart disease, but that delay uh, seemed to start from around 30 gestational weeks. And uh, recently, we, we performed a very interesting preliminary analysis looking at the <clears throat> relationship between fetal circle pattern and postnatal 18 month developmental outcomes in subject with isolated ventricular megaly. And in this result, subject with the developmental delay had lower uh, similarity index of the so-called position pattern compared to the subject with the normal development. So uh, this, this preliminary result showed the potential of so-called pattern index as a marker to predict uh, neurodevelopmental outcomes, uh, but we still uh, need a larger data set study in the future. And uh, this is the the last topic in this presentation is fetal brain age estimation. Uh, because brain 
changes in volume, surface area, cortical thickness, and shape of many structures with age. Uh, biological brain age could be an important marker of uh, brain health. And previous studies have proposed a method to estimate brain age using MRI, and they showed that the gap, age gap between the brain age and actual chronological age is an important measure characterizing uh, typical brain development, aging, and brain disorder. And one recent longitudinal study used the deep learning technique and uh, they predict gray matter age and found a significant correlation between uh, predicted age difference, so between brain age gap and instant dementia. So when the brain age was uh, older than chronological age, that subject had higher risk of dementia and low cognitive function. In fetal brain, there have been, uh, of course, MRI studies to predict brain age using uh, brain structural features. So brain volume and surface curvedness and surface normalized mean curvature were used for fetal brain age prediction based on linear and uh, nonlinear regression model. But uh, extracting fetal brain structural feature is not simple. As I showed you, it needs a several fetal MRI processing steps. And in our case, the failure rate of data processing is about 20% because of uh, image noise and severe head motion. So the big advantage of using deep learning approach for this purpose is that we don't need a uh, complex image processing or feature extraction. So for fetal brain age estimation, we also use the deep learning method. Uh, when considering the deep learning network architecture, a 2D single slice deep learning model may not be enough for accurate brain estimation because of the lack of anatomical information. So we can think of a 3D deep learning network, but uh, due to uh, inter-slice motion artifacts, it couldn't even lower the prediction uh, accuracy. And also we will have a smaller training data set and two-dimensional network. So uh, in our study, we used the 2D convolutional neural network and we performed multiple predictions from uh, multi-slice in multi-view volume images. And uh, uh, average the predictions for the final uh, age estimation. So this approach used uh, 3D anatomical information and this is less acceptable to inter-slice uh, motion. So uh, we don't even need motion correction process, just uh, from raw data after brain extraction that minimal processing is needed. And our network model was trained using uh, 2,765 MRI volumes from 220 healthy fetuses. And our uh, predicted brain age was uh, highly correlated with chrono chronological age and the uh, average brain age gap between predicted age and chronological age was less than two days. And when comparing with other uh, studies of fetal brain age prediction, our approach shows higher accuracy of age prediction. And we, we also estimate fetal brain age in fetuses with brain malformation, such as gray matter, heterotopia, polymicrogyria, and microcephaly. Uh, and we found significantly uh, larger brain age gap in abnormal fetuses. And it means that their brain development status is not normal. So our fetal brain age prediction method could be used to assess normality of the brain development. So yeah, in summary, <clears throat> our 
uh, automatic fetal MRI processing and advanced analysis techniques can provide reliable data processing and various brain features extraction. And uh, it could also show high sensitivity in detecting subtle and early brain abnormalities. And it shows the potential as a imaging marker to predict postnatal clinical outcomes. And our future work is to uh, test reliability and accuracy of our pipeline more with a larger data set and uh, we will develop a new method for more regional fetal brain segmentation. And we also, we are very interested in analyzing developmental trajectory from fetal to neonatal stage using longitudinal MRI. And it is very uh, important, it's very important to perform more correlation study with the genetics and maternal environmental factors. And uh, more neurodevelopmental outcome. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Kiho. That is a really impressive body of work. I was really enjoyed listening to that. Before, I always have, of course, a bazillion questions, but um, does anybody have any chat questions?